Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I have the pleasure of working on a Shimano TLD20. It's a lever drag fishing reel. Uh, this uh, came in from Thomas. Uh, Thomas has brought them over for his friends, and uh, I actually have three of these. Uh, this one I chose because it's kind of an interesting issue. When you're in free spool, doesn't doesn't turn that easy. Same thing when you're in lever drag, it turns, but not that easy. And uh, it's binding, right? Well, why is it binding? It's pretty easy to see. The line is all stacked up on this side, which is okay because it's not a level of wine reel, but it's bumping up. You can't, uh, it, it's scraping against the bottom of this line guide. And well, that's going to cause a drag. How can you fix that? That's, that's an easy fix. Just pull the line off. Or at least pull off enough of it to, to stop it from binding. Well, we're going to service this whole reel. We're going to take it apart. I'm going to show you how this reel is. Uh, made, how you service it, and uh, we'll get you going again, take it out there fishing. So while I'm doing some of this little house cleaning stuff here, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of fishing wheel repair and service, and if you do, uh, please hit that notification button. That'll show you when I'm posting the videos, and well, you can make a determination as to whether that's a video that you want to watch. Today we're going to do a saltwater lever drag reel and um, show you how to fix this issue right away. Now you can get a uh, spacing under there and you can see it'll turn nice and easily. So that was that's an easy fix, but this reel is dirty. It's been sitting on the boat for a while. It's time to tune it up and get it ready for the uh, spring fishing season. That's what we're going to do today. So, well, uh, some, some of my episodes will be on salt water reels. Some of those will be on uh, Freshwater bassing reels. Sometimes you'll see a uh, an inshore spinning reel. There's all kinds of reels that I work on, and that's kind of the joy of the channel. The channel is uh, trying to teach you how to do it yourself. I set it up kind of to, as a legacy, kind of before I can't do this anymore. I'd like to pass along the uh, the tips and techniques to fix a reel, and I hope you uh, subscribe and uh, look forward to those episodes. All right, I have a multi-tool here. Uh, it wasn't that expensive, but it has the big uh, nut uh, remover, screw remover for the handle. This is a single speed reel. It's uh, got large capacity to it. It's a trolling reel, and uh, I kind of like them. They're old school. The TLD stands for Triton Lever Drag. The 20 is a... Uh, well, they used to put them in by size. They would tell you that's for a 20-pound fish. I don't know if they still do that or, or not. We just took off the pre preset adjuster in the spring. When I take these pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray. That helps me to keep track of them. Inside, you're going to find the preset adjuster. This one's got some old grease on it, so we'll wipe that off right away. Notice that there's two kind of pyramids or studs on here. And those, uh, those studs ride and pull the spool in to connect with the pressure plate. And that enables you to get the drag. So clean that all up, put that into your parts tray. And now we can start removing the exterior pieces. There's three screws that hold this uh, preset guide track on. There's a flathead screw in the middle. And then there's two that are rounded that have the bump guards for min and max on the uh, release points. Those on the sides are interchangeable. Don't try and put the screw with these in the middle. It'll kind of knock up against that. I actually had a, a fellow bring a reel in not that long ago. Lover drag reel says I, I, I can only get it to here. I can't uh, get it past there. And it turns out that the, the screw was sitting proud and well. Of course you couldn't. There is a uh, Teflon washer on the back of this, and uh, you, can, you can leave it there, it'll come off. I only got pressed on pretty good there, but that's your washer. It's actually a, kind of a fabric washer. But uh, know that that belongs there when we go to reassemble. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. Maybe you're watching this video because you didn't, and you've got an open reel and trying to figure out how to put it back together again. That's okay, but a best practice is to take the pictures along the way 
at critical junctures so that you know the orientation of the pieces and parts and uh, the sequence that you took them off. So there's six or seven screws here. These are the one downfall to me of, of servicing this reel is how your hand gets tired by the time you're done. A lot of times folks will ask me about the mechanical screwdriver. Uh, can they use that in the assembly and disassembly of the reel? Quite honestly, I don't have a problem with the removal of the screws. Just uh, take it slow. Don't put it on the high-speed drive. I do have more of an issue on the inbound side, particularly with reels that are made with plastic or graphite casing. If the torque in that uh, screwdriver is significant enough, it could bind it or crack it. So I don't recommend that. If you do need it, I tell you to, to leave a screw proud, which is sort of like this. Couple of turns from completion, and then finish the rest off by hand when you're tightening it. All right, well, it's simple enough in terms of a, a removal. A lot of these new reels come in with all kinds of crazy stuff, including torque screws and other, other types of screws, as opposed to just a straight Phillips head screw. But you notice that all those screws are being placed on the table. And the reason I do that is to make sure that they're all the same size. Now, I've worked on reels like this in the past. I know that these are all the same size, but it never hurts to take the time to make sure. All right, I do want to remove that little cap that goes under this, the handle. And then this whole side plate is ready for removal. You simply pull the plate off and out. Oh, I got a screw. I was going to say, it's simple enough to have it come out, but if you forget a screw, it's not going to be that easy, is it? Don't, uh, don't trust your judgment. Don't think, okay, it's just stuck with something. Go ahead and start prying. Go back and check your work. Let's see if we can get it. Now you get it off nice and easily. You'll see this is a single drive reel. It has your pinion gear, your main gear, and underneath here, I'm going to push this out. Underneath here is a dog and spring setup to this. You'll notice that the spring goes around the post. Right here, it's held on by a little uh, pressure clip. You have the spring, you have the dog, and uh, when it's operational, it'll be going this way. We'll show you how to reset that. Don't take it off. Clean it up and around it. Don't take it off unless the dog needs to be replaced. That little pressure clip that they put in there is kind of finicky. It's uh, easily expanded and it doesn't go back over the post and the like. So my experience is just clean up around it, make sure you get all the dirt and grease off and you'll be fine. This is a, a, a dog setup that's the older setup. It's the traditional anti-reverse dog with the beak. It does not have a instant anti-reverse on this. There is a top bearing here. It's shielded, not sealed. I'm going to put oil on that, let that seep in while I work on the rest of this. The case on the inside is clean. The case on the outside has got some kind of junk here. I don't know if that's fish guts or what it is. It seems to be coming off with a, a fairly aggressive steel wall, but something on there has gone amiss. We're going to service that gear side first. So you want to clean off the grease on the old gear. And while I'm doing that, if you have any questions on this reel, or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one, maybe you're stuck, uh, leave it in the comment section of this video, and I will try to answer those for you. Well, looks like that line that I took off is going to get in the way here. All right, I checked the teeth, and I want to pull through the teeth to make sure that they're all clean and we don't have all grease in there. Notice that I pull it and let the debris fall onto that paper towel. That way it doesn't wind up on my bench to be transferred to something else. Check the teeth on this side to make sure you have all nice peaks. Check the teeth this way to make sure that they're all straight and clean. Once you do that, we can take the Fishing reel grease, I'm using pen precision reel grease, that's the blue grease you see on the brush. I use an artist brush because the hair on the brush doesn't tend to get loose. And we'll put a little bit on the back side too. All right, this is how you set the main gear then. You know you have the anti-reverse dog.
get the gear started, just put it in, and when you get to this point, you're going to have to pull up on the tab of that dog this way and push in the main gear. Otherwise, you're going to trap that dog inside and, well, it's not going to work very well. What I like to do to hold that in place so that it doesn't come slipping out when you go to install is put the handle back on. So the first piece of that is this shield. Which I'm having a little bit of an issue with, of course. There we go. I want to make sure before I go any further that I still have that dog connected. I do. I haven't pushed it out. And now the handle will hold that in place so that it doesn't uh, skip out on you. You can actually do the rest of the assembly of this reel with the handle attached. So that's not a problem here. You can't do the disassembly of it because you have to take the handle and shield off in order to remove that main gear do the cleaning there. This is also a good time to uh, take a kitchen scrubby and some rod and reel cleaner. I'm using pens rod and reel cleaner here. And clean up the film and the light that's gotten on this case. As we mentioned, it looks like there was some kind of fish or debris or something on there that maybe bait hit it or something. And kind of made it that way. Clean up the handle too while we're at it. All right. Chris is telling me it's time for a new paper towel, so let's go do that. Buff that old stuff off there. And we'll move on. Nice. You can hear how it's clicking and working. That's the way it should. I like to leave this off. I like to reinstall this on the pressure plate as opposed to in the main. All right, we're going to remove the spool now. And that's kind of how you can tell that you got too much line to one side. If your spool catches, that line should be, or will be coming over the top. So this was probably in the heat of battle here, and they did all kinds of things to fight the fish. And didn't worry about level winding the reel. That's okay. They just lost a couple of yards of line there. I'm going to put a rubber band on it to hold the rest of it. They can snip that off when it's time to go fishing again. just want to hold that so that when I go to reset this, that line doesn't uh, get trapped in the bottom. Well, there's a little bit more of that gunk there. I'll just do the same thing I just did. I'm going to use a little bit of penetrating oil just to kind of help dissolve it. I'm going to go, this is a 4-0 steel wall. It's not going to damage the case, but it should get the, the old bait or whatever that is off of here from a cleaning standpoint. The rest of it I can use that scrubby pad with the cleaner on it. There's no sense when you're servicing a reel not to take the additional few minutes to, to just clean it up. It's particularly if you got the old baits and whatever else you may have on there. And then of course just wipe it down. Just like that. Well, leopard drags have been around for a while. Surprisingly, everybody thinks that just because we've got these these new mini frames now, like the Accurates and the, the like, that it's a relatively new uh, piece. It's not. The lever drags have been around for 30 or 40 years at least. And uh, they're a simple concept. What you have underneath here, and we'll show it to you in a moment, you have a pressure plate and uh, you have a drag washer. And they're separated when you're in free spool. And as you saw those ramps on that lever, when you pull the lever, it's going to pull this axle shaft that way, <laughs> in towards the, uh, the gear. That's going to engage the spool and the pressure plate, and that's how you're going to get drag. The more you increase, the more drag you're going to get. Shimano was very good about this. They told you to unscrew it, and they gave you an arrow because this is a counter screw or a reverse screw. You can use your hand on this most of the time. It has a, a serrated edge that enables you to grip it and then turn it to get the piece stuck. Here's your pressure plate I was referring to. Nice and shiny and clean the way it should be. Underneath that we have two ball bearings and a spring in the middle. Those are going to go into my parts tray. 
I'm going to oil that berry. I'm going to knock the other one out in a moment. And we have a very clean drag, so we don't have to worry about that. That's the way it should be. Come back to the other side of the reel now. We have two screws holding the rest of the assembly in. And we need to remove this because there's a ball bearing under here as well. In order to service the reel, you want to make sure that you've cleaned and oiled the bearings and that they're not defective. When I was spinning it before, I didn't hear any bearing chirp or, or anything that would suggest that that bearing needed to be replaced. So we're good with that. Take that out. You can see that there's two tension washers or three tension washers in there. You can leave them. There's nothing to do with that. And a ball bearing. We want to oil that ball bearing. I oil them. Some people like to put uh, grease on them. I don't. I find that if I put the grease on them, the, uh, when that uh, dirt and the light penetrates that, the, um, the greases hold that dirt and bog down the bearing's performance. All right, we've oiled that, checked it all out. Now it's working fine. Don't lose that pin. That pin's very important in terms of resetting. I knocked the bearing out of the back side of that and put oil on that. And we're going to go ahead and reinsert this. We're going to find the two side holes. We're going to go into our parts tray and take the two screws that belong in there and put those back in. That's one. And that's the other. Notice that the tag on that line is still hanging out here. Somebody asked me before, why do you, why do you accept reels with line on them? Well, I never know whether the line has just been replaced or not. That's the responsibility of the owner. I recommend that the line get replaced annually, just as I recommend that the service be performed on an annual basis. And uh, I always leave a note with my customers. If, they, if I don't know, I remind them to change the line. The line is relatively inexpensive, and uh, it's just a good practice to, to do that at that time. Just buff off that pressure plate if there's anything on it. I don't grease the drag washers on this reel. Put your cap back on. This is a reverse screw to tighten it up now. And it's hand tightened. So we're good there. All right. Find the pin, center the pin so that you have it equidistant on both sides of the rod, the axle shaft. Find the slot in the back of the piece. Before you do that, you can put a little bit of oil onto the click tongue and then just go ahead and merge in the axle shaft and the pins into the carrier. Turn your axle shaft and eventually you will get it where you're uh, flush here or close to flush here. Well, there's only one other piece that needs to be serviced on this then. That's just to do the same thing we did with the main gear. Just pull the old grease out of the pinion gear. Make sure it's nice and clean. Check the teeth. And then we can put a little bit of grease on this one as well. We're going to put a little bit of grease onto the axle shaft there where it's going to move in and out. And put a little bit of grease into the teeth of the pinion gear. You don't need to overload it, it's going to just throw it off if you go crazy with grease. But get enough that it's going to last. This is why I like to do the mounting from this side as opposed to the other, and that's because there's serrated edges in here that match the gear teeth. And it's a little square setup, and you need to get that in nice and tight. On this side, when you go to put it into the bearing, it's just a uh, little collar here for the bearing. So you don't have that same issue. All right, we can put this back together now. I have the handle on because a lot of times if you don't have the handle on, when you start to merge the two pieces, that main gear slips and that, that anti-reverse dog falls out. So I've learned kind of a best practice, leave the handle on. 
line it up. There's a whole bunch of reference points, but get it started. Not there yet. There we go. Be patient. Eventually you'll turn it enough that you find the right spot. Hold it tight now because the spring is pushing against that. Go get a couple of those screws to take the pressure off. One up top. One on the bottom. And then you can kind of relax your grip. Now the only thing left to do is put all those trim pieces back on after we put those pile of screws back in. We know it doesn't matter where you put the screw. I can release the grip now. The screws are holding the side case. And again, if you need to at this point, use a mechanical screwdriver because your hand is getting tired. Start them, but don't drive them all the way in. Again, I'll show you what I mean by proud. That's proud, leave it out, and then just finish the last few turns by hand. Well, if you're with me so far and you haven't subscribed, I'm going to encourage you one more time to subscribe. If you like this kind of thing, I do it all the time. You're looking over my shoulder in the shop as I service customers' reels, and I try to uh, try to share what I'm doing with you. So I've got a lot of folks that said, well, I started this as a hobby. I got a small business going now, and when I when I need some help, I'm watching your videos, and sometimes I'm just watching your videos to learn, and that's fantastic. I got asked early on, somebody asked me if I'm afraid that I'm going to lose business by doing these videos, teaching people how to do it themselves. Well, first of all, the reach on this channel is wonderful. Not only does it cover all of the states, but I get people viewing it from across the world. And uh, certainly I wasn't going to be servicing their reels anyway. So, I don't mind. All right, let's put that last screw in. And as I mentioned, we can do the rest of this reel with that handle on. Sometimes it'll just get in the way, but there's no reason that uh, you can't do it that way. And to me, I've just found it's easier to do it that way. We want to take our trim ring next. Make sure that gets cleaned up. And we want to take the Teflon washer that goes in the back here. And you want to hook the trim ring over the rail kind of center it and put it on just like that. There's the two bumps, or the two of the collars that are the bump guards. Let's go ahead and put those in. And then once we get those on, that's, that's going to hold that lever in place. So what you need to just worry, you know, worry, but what you need to be aware of is that that lever floats and it, if you're not doing this right, you're either not going to have the beak of that lever in the track or you're not going to have the, uh, the lever on the reel. There's one more. That's the one with the flathead that goes in the middle here. As I said, I got somebody put one in with the rounded head and then told me that the lever drag wouldn't pass there. Well, that makes all the sense in the world. When I set the free spool adjuster now, I move it over as far as I can to the free spool position. Here's your two ramp points right here on each side of that carrier. And on the inside of the carrier, you're going to notice a square. So what we want to do is two things. We want to aim those ramps for the corresponding insets, and you want to set the square so that it's on the square of the axle shaft. When you do that, you can put the spring and the carrier inside that piece and give it a couple turns to get it started. 
If you didn't set it this way, if the ramps were out, there's a good chance you wouldn't have free spool. All right, talking about free spool now, we've oiled the three bearings that are inside that spool. This thing should spin very nice and easily, and that's exactly what it's doing. Ah, I like that the rubber band actually shows you a little bit of this movement. Very nice. Okay, to adjust your free spool and your star adjuster, or your lever drag adjuster then, start by just what we did here. Advance it, and that's way too loose because the handle hasn't started to turn yet. Bring it all the way back to free spool, give it another turn or two. Same thing, make sure you have the free spool, advance it, still needs adjustment, but now we have the handle turning towards the max drag. So we know that everything is set right, it's just a matter of finding the right position now. Bring it back, another half turn. I'd like to ideally get that handle turning uh, at the first strike point, free spool, and now I have the handle turning at that first strike point. Now that's still, there's drag, but it's still a light drag, and over at max drag, well, we're pretty much tied down right now. So the rest of this is all about how the angler wants to fish it. Does he want more at that first strike? If he does, so just another quarter of a turn or something is going to make that move. Yep, tightens it up a little bit more. And of course, on the max drag side, you're locked in. And just play with it and uh, see how it goes till you get the right condition for what you're fishing. Well, I leave it in free spool. Now, that's sometimes tough if you don't have that rubber band on there. But uh, I just like that because the pressure plate and the drag washer is not engaged. So it's going to limit the compression on that drag washer and it'll last you longer. Okay, well, other than a little bit of a cleanup and a little bit of tightening down on this handle, remember we just hand tightened it for that uh, screw set there so that we can do the anti-reverse dog without it falling out. Now we'll just kind of come over. You want to align that scallop with the set for the handle tie-down screw. Get the tie-down screw out of your parts tray. It's the last piece in there, so I guess I've the ones that I've taken off, I've put back on, or I've lost, but it looks like they're all in the right place now. And that's kind of the service of your Shimano TLD20 lever drag reel. I hope you've enjoyed it. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. I truly appreciate your efforts. And to everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.